Thank you, thank you for yielding. Um, I've been looking at some numbers over here while we were talking. Uh, my estimates, you have about 4,600 people in your agency who either carry a weapon or are eligible to carry a weapon. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so you know, Mr. Stewart made a good example. You're not in the Army. <clears throat> You're not in the military, but you have a armed force under your command of 4,600 armed men and women. Yes, sir. That's a huge responsibility. Yes, sir. Uh, it's the kind of responsibility that chiefs of police in major cities have when they have that, that responsibility. The chain of command has to be rigid to maintain the kind of discipline that is necessary to, to handle an armed force. It's just that simple. It's a dangerous, by its definition, it's a dangerous group of people, whether it be the Houston Police Department or whether it be your force. Okay. Uh, now, the concern we hear is that, and, and let me say something, on the IG, I think I know why you did that, because you want to make sure this is a clean investigation from the start. But having dealt with, and I'm not criticizing any IGs here, it also can be a place to put something to go away for a while, and they can take an awful lot of time in an IG investigation before it becomes a current event again in Washington, D.C., and a lot can calm things down in that period of time. And having had experience in our Veterans Administration with some of the IG investigations uh, and the results of those investigations, uh, they can be disappointing. So I don't want this to be a, a policy of, well, we got a problem, punish the AG, by the time they get their job done, everybody will forgotten about our problem, because I'm not going to forget about the problem. Sure. And I don't think anybody up here is going to forget about the problem. And the IG, I hope, has been told them that they better build a fire under themselves and get us a response very promptly yes, as to what's, what's going on here. But in reality, you're the head. You're, you've got a, people above you in the chain, but you are in charge of these armed people. Yes, sir. And there has to be a strict chain of command. The, the managers of those people should be all over them today. If these two people were senior management, they sh you should be all over them today. Yes, sir. And I realize you've got union contracts, you got, you know, civil service issues, and all those issues protect the worker, sometimes to the de to the detriment of the agency. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a weakness that I find appalling. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things that, if I could wave a magic wand to fix in Washington. I would think the ability not to terminate someone for for dangerous or bad behavior immediately, quite honestly, I think is unacceptable. Yes, sir. But it's not your fault. That is the way it is. I, I recognize that. Uh, but in turn, you're in command. Yes, sir. You're the you're the two star. You got a division under your command, and you got to make sure that everyone in your command and control structure are meeting that obligation. If everybody's just sitting around and watching me talk on television to figure out what it is, you know, I can chew their ass too. Yes, sir. But that's not my job. Yes, sir. That's your job and those people in the chain of command. And it needs to be done whether G is making a recommendation or not. Yes, sir. I, I think it's a barrel push, barrel bump, and a tape break. But then the question is, you're both holding badges. Why didn't you get out of your car, walk through the crime scene and say, what's going on, instead of being so arrogant as to think you can intrude into a crime scene? That's another issue. If they were stone sober, that's an issue you have to ask them. Are you such a big shot in this agency that you think you, you can just drive right through one of my, my taped off crime scenes? And that, sh that should be, yes, sir. That should be a, something that they get called on the carpet for if they were stone sober. They were arrogant. Yes, sir. And that's and part of the part of that you can have in an in an agency like you have is people who think they don't put their pants on one leg at a time like everybody else. Yes, sir. They're supermen, so they can act like supermen. They can't act like supermen. And that's what we really are all talking about up here. Your job right now, and you know, some of these outside reports told the president not to hire inside the agency. Yes, sir. 
And so you've got a, you've got a big responsibility because you got 30 years of friends. But you've got to also start jerking a knot in their tail. Yes, sir. And that's your job. And and I I believe you. When I met you, I believed you were the guy that could do it. I still believe you're the guy that could do it. But recognize what your authority is and exercise that authority. Yes, sir. Uh, that that that's, that's not a question. I just wanted to say that. Because I think sometimes we get so off acting like bureaucrats, we forget you are a dangerous bunch of people. Yes, sir. And as dangerous people, you have to be within a set, a set chain of command regulated from top to bottom. Yes, sir. Or something dangerous is going to happen. Yes, sir. What we're all worried about up here. We don't want anybody under your tutelage to get hurt or to allow someone that they're supposed to be protecting to get hurt, whether it's the president, the pope, people at the U.N., or whatever. But those are big responsibilities, and I think your chain of command is is haywire. Yes, sir. Work on that. Yes, sir. Mr. Robert, 